What's up, everybody? So today I'm going to walk us through my critique of training models. So I've been a part of Pat Davidson's program design mentorship over the past five weeks. We got another five weeks to go. And it's all about just trying to build a training model, understanding the anatomy and physiology involved, and how to actually elicit structural and functional adaptations through training. So I've created a list of criteria for how to judge a minimum requirement for a training model and then an additional set of criteria for elaborating on the quality of that training model. So what I'm gonna to do today is just elaborate on the criteria that I have chosen and kind of the process for how I would critique somebody else's training model. So we have two teams of 20 odd people on each team. We're probably down to about 10 people that are still active on team two uh, and five plus or so on team one. So we're really getting down to the nitty gritty who's willing to be all in on this gauntlet. So it's been good conversation and there's added a lot to think about as far as how to develop my model. And it's actually been really beneficial being able to look at other people's uh, makings of a model and kind of see their thought process and maybe some things I can take from it or potentially things I would add to their model, just being able to elaborate on my understanding of training. So I'm gonna dive into the critique and how I kind of plan to elaborate that. Uh, over the next couple of weeks, I'll be posting regular critiques of other people's training model using this rubric. And I'll also be posting videos of me elaborating my own training model, and then at some point critiquing that as it evolves throughout the process. And then of course, for the many years to come. So without further ado, uh, how I'm gonna start this off is each time we've had this critique, I've added something to it. So I'm gonna add one more thing uh, as of today going into the next session. So first, uh, once I go to critique somebody's model, I'm going to try and get an overview to understand what the function of that machine is. So what is their model actually going to produce based on what I see? From there, I would try and identify its perceived limitation in regard to what it's trying to produce. So is it able to give you a short-term understanding of how to make somebody better at X? And is it limited by its ability to tell you how that's going to take place uh, over the course of a longer duration, or maybe how that may be impacted by other qualities within the training model, whatever that may be. So summarize what its function as a machine is, and then elaborate on what its potential limitations as far as producing that thing that it should be able to produce. So for our actual criteria looking at training models, first and foremost, uh, I have it as a zero out of two scale. So essentially one if it's there, two if you're able to elaborate on it to a useful degree. So for training principles, uh, I kind of expect everyone to have the four standardized exercise science training principles of specificity, overload, individual differences, and reversibility. I would give them an additional point if they can elaborate on all those and their applicability within their model. And then if they actually have any of their own philosophies or sub principles to go along with that, again, as it relates to the function of their model. Number two. Do they have a way of obtaining a needs analysis? So can they uh, identify what metrics would be important to the individual as it relates to their goal? So you'd have a point for having something, and then I'd give you an additional point for being able to elaborate on what types of needs analysis you could identify for the client. So for example, uh, a general consult form. So do you understand the circumstances of their environment, constraints of their environment, uh, obstacles, concerns, what their actual goals are, who they are as a person, hours of sleep, water, nutrition to an extent, things of that nature. Uh, another needs analysis could be just movement capacity. Do you have a table test type thing or some way to identify? Are they able to meet the coordinated demands or just general movement capacity needed uh, for the movements involved in their goal? Uh, and then a third one would be like performance metrics. So do you have a way to identify where their current performance level is in regards to where it needs to be to meet their goal? Uh, and yeah, so can you analyze what is potentially important information that is applicable to the training, needs to be developed from the training, and something you could show back to the client as here's a clear improvement towards your goal. Number three, if this, then that. So, so essentially it would be like a regression or progression directory. So this just builds off the previous. If I understand my training principles, so here's the overarching guidepost or lighthouse to kind of dictate my decision making. I've identified what needs analysis for the individual. 
So if I know where their starting place is from a uh, environmental constraint, movement capacity, or performance metric, then I can say, here's where a good starting place would be based off my criteria within the training model. And then here's how I would progress that individual towards their goal. And at any given point, whether it be any sort of hiccup or change in goal uh, or injury, we can always regress that to a place that is uh, going to allow them to be successful or competent and then reprogress that movement once again. So again, building on top of your training principles that needs analysis, you know what needs analysis, then you should know where to start that individual based on that analysis and how to progress it. Number four, we have tracking. So again, building on, uh, building on everything prior to that. So I have my principles that are going to dictate my decision making. I've identified the metrics that matter to this individual in regards to their goal. I know where their starting place is based off of, uh, or sorry, I know what they should be doing based off of their starting place. And then tracking is just trying to close the gap between where I started them and where we're trying to get the intended outcome or lead them with the if this, then that progression. So if uh, I've identified some sort of performance limitation, here's the number I'm going to use as a proxy for identifying that limitation. Am I able to track that number to a qualitative or sorry, quantitative improvement over any duration? And that would show that if I had this, I did that, and that led to the improvement in the metric that was worth tracking as it relates to their goal. Number five, is it reproducible? So can I take this model and apply it to a variety of individuals and have it give them a way to meet their goal as long as the goals are kind of within the uh, functionality of the model? So as to say, a powerlifter won't necessarily benefit from a marathoner's training model or just something of that regard. Um, but point being, Am I able to take your model, apply it to multiple different individuals, and have it lead to their intended outcome that they are looking for? I think all of those would be a minimum criteria for what establishes a training model. Anything less than this, and you are clearly missing pieces for the full picture of how to develop somebody towards their goals. My second set of criteria is more of a qualitative standpoint, so this is a little more up to personal preference on how things play out but I think they're all pretty relative from individual, uh, individual to individual, uh, maybe besides appeal, but I feel like that would even be pretty standard among most people. So again, I'll dive into the criteria and just elaborate on why I think they're needed or useful for judging somebody's training model. So starting off, uh, again, it's a zero to two model. You'd have a one for having some relative reference to the criteria and then two, if you're able to elaborate on it to a meaningful degree, uh, that it improves its utility in the training model. Again, all of these are things that would add to quality. They're not necessarily a bare minimum requirement to be considered a training model. So number one, is it organized? Can you easily reference your training model or any bits and pieces in it as it relates to the current client or current question on hand or whatever that may be? As opposed to, do you need to read through paragraph after paragraph to find one sentence that applies to the scenario at hand? So organize, is it easily referenceable? Can you go in there, find a directory? Uh, X is on page six, go to page six and use that thing. So organize. Number two, is it teachable? I think this would go, again, hand in hand with organize. If something's organized, it's much easier for someone to be able to absorb that information and utilize it for themselves. So when I think of te uh, teachable, what comes to mind is a uh, competent tutorial for a video game. So I don't necessarily need you to like walk me through level one to level 100, but if you can walk me through level one to level 10, and those principles that got me there are gonna be consistent across the entire spectrum of to elite performance or my goal, then if I can at least get that basic understanding of how I need to function within this game to get to higher and higher levels in that game, then I can take the ball and roll with it. And you've been able to teach me something that I can apply continuously uh, over the next 90 levels or whatever that may be. So can you take this model? Is it organized enough? And does it cover all the appropriate criteria that allow you to take somebody from level one to level 10, which would also probably be indicative of your ability to take somebody from level one to level 100 
but would definitely need a little more elaboration on. So I think the one to 10 scenario gives you a great idea on its uh, teachability and graspability for a Padawan or client or whoever would need to learn from this. Number three, citations or references. So do you have a reference or cookie or breadcrumb trail leading you towards where you are today? So I think this adds to the validity of your program. So do you have other sources, especially potentially sources that I jive with or have heard from as well, iterating information that you're able to competently grasp and then utilize within your training model that would lead along progressions? So you're if this, then that. So one, it adds to your validity. So I don't think you're just like, saying stuff even if it makes sense and sounds smart um, even if it's useful and shows results i still believe it adds to the validity and utility of your model if you can elaborate on why you came to that understanding or how you came there uh, and number two i think it just gives you a better grasp and ability to manipulate those things so if i know under these circumstances this intervention does this that's great i don't need to know why the person figured out this intervention uh under these circumstances did that but if i do understand it then i'm better able to manipulate this intervention to potentially lead to some other outcomes for this individual or maybe similar outcomes for different individuals under slightly different scenarios so two things for citation it improves your validity that which would be regard to teachable to other people or organization and then it allows you more manipulation or control over your own model so you're able, better able to understand where these thoughts came from, how you can adjust them to fit your needs. And then number four, we have appeal. So I feel this is, again, a little more personal of a preference more so than the others. But I think your emotional response to looking at something is going to have a big impact on your ability to actually utilize it, um, care to be taught by it, uh, how well you're able to sift through it and just function with that uh, device or that machine. So if it's not appealing, like you're probably not going to be too interested in digging into it, which means you're not going to get a whole lot out of it. So this would just kind of be like the uh, icing on top. Like it's got to look flavor, flavorful uh, to some extent. Uh, like I'd be interested in diving in. And I think interest is probably one of the biggest things that gets people to grasp onto content. So motivation burns out um and discipline it's like a task to kind of keep up with but interest or intrigue uh, there's tons of kids that play minecraft and they're probably not disciplined to play minecraft they're probably not motivated to play minecraft they're interested in playing minecraft and that interest will build castles on castles on castles so i think intrigue will always be your biggest fire as far as um diving into something and trying to make it your own or um, enjoy it or utilize it or be fulfilled by it so anyways those are my criteria for how i would judge somebody's training model again the left side would kind of be bare minimum requirements to be considered a training model and then the purple and the right these would kind of be quality metrics that would improve upon your utility or um, teachability or learnability of your training model as I said, in the future critiques, I will start by trying to identify what the individual's training model is capable of producing. So how does machine function? Below that, I would try and identify what its potential limiting factors are in regards to producing that thing. And then I would elaborate on the critiques as far as minimum requirements to train somebody from zero to 100. And then the quality additives that would make it a little more of a preferred model, teachable, um, referenceable or just appealing to individuals. So uh, I appreciate y'all listening. If you got any questions, please let me down, know down below. If you got any thoughts on how you would change the critiques or any uh, thoughts on how you would go about critiquing a training model, I'd love to hear it. So anyways, appreciate y'all tuning in. Happy Monday. Good luck. Enjoy the ride. And I'll catch you all at some point. Peace out, everybody.